Hi everyone, I want to talk about Nightmare Dungeons, the primary endgame activity that you're going to use to farm experience in the late game and also level up your glyphs. I talked about Paragon boards and all that already, so here I want to focus on the actual gameplay. So what you need to know about Nightmare Dungeons is that they are essentially beefed up versions of normal dungeons. You can see this here, you might have played this in the beta already, Molewood and Fractured Peaks. So this is just a regular dungeon, but now it is uh, amplified with those Nightmare Dungeon affixes. So there are a few mechanics at play here that I think are important to understand to be effective with how you can progress and how you can beat those dungeons effectively. Here you can see the sigil that I used to open this dungeon. This is the Mallwood Nightmare Dungeon sigil. It does have its tier here at the top. There are up to 100 tiers, which is essentially the difficulty level. If you have played Diablo 3, this is a little bit like the Greater Rift levels. So the monsters do scale up with both damage and health the higher tiers you go. And they also scale up in levels. A monster's level is always exactly 54 levels higher than the tier of the dungeon that you're running. So that means that the highest monster level in the game is 154. And the tier 1 Nightmare Dungeon will have level 55 monsters. So this is kind of the minimum because it starts in Nightmare Difficulty with tier 1 sigils. So you can only access them in the end game after the campaign and all that. And then goes all the way to tier 100. There are two different types of sigils. So you saw an ancestral one and here is a sacred one. This is tied to the world tier. You can see this in the bottom right. So uh, this one is only world tier 3. And then others are only world tier 4. These are the ancestral ones. So this kind of corresponds to sacred items that you can find and ancestral items. These are just the higher tier items that drop in the higher difficulties. And you cannot actually access, uh, you know, sacred sigil when in torment difficulty or you cannot access ancestral sigil when in nightmare difficulty. And between those two steps the sigils also become more intense. You see here on sacred sigils in nightmare difficulty you have up to 12 revives allowed but on the ancestral ones it's only four revives. So this means that the most important consideration that when you're trying to beat a certain like high nightmare dungeon tier in like nightmare dungeon pushing sort of say for example when they make leaderboards down the line will be to actually stay alive. There's no time limit like in Diablo 3, at least not yet. I guess maybe when they introduce a leaderboard component, there might be. But at least for now, this is the only thing that you have to worry about, which is not dying. And you also see that the affixes themselves become more intense. You see this green affix here, this is a positive affix. So every single sigil always has one positive affix. In this case, you find more gold. Here's another one with more gold, but you see it actually is uh, stronger or there's like higher value because it's ancestral. I don't think it scales up with the tier itself. There's only a distinction between sacred and ancestral. So this is just the value that you're going to deal with basically. And then there are also additional modifiers. There are like environmental modifiers, for example, the death pulse or the drifting shade here. So these are effects that, for example, you kill monsters, they explode after a short time, or here you have like a it's like a little projectile that follows you around that explodes when it hits you and then has like some AOE dot on the ground that you should not stand in. These kind of things. So there are these environmental effects and then there is like monster damage buffs or monster defensive buffs. So you see this here, monster get cold damage. Monsters take less damage from certain effects. And then there's like some utility buff. So in this case, monsters can become unstoppable at low life. So there are up to four negative affixes and one positive one every single time on the ancestral ones. And on the sacred ones, it's yeah a lot easier. There's only two of them. The thing is that generally sacred dungeons are not really worth doing in my opinion. The reason is that as you go to higher tiers, you get significantly more XP to level up your glyphs. In fact, it's kind of scales linearly. I think it has a base value of two XP and then it's plus two per tier. So it's... Uh, yeah, like very, very slow to the lobby list when you do like a tier 1, tier 2, tier 5 or 10 or whatever. But it gets much faster when you start doing like tier 30, tier 40, tier 50. It's essentially like multiplied by the tier, so to say, how much XP you get. And on top of that, you generally want to try to finish your Renown grind very early. So when you have your first character and you reach endgame, then Renown is your main objective. You want to get those skill points. You want to get those Paragon points from the Renown system. So you kind of just like progress past those nightmare sigils uh, at least on the sacred tier quite easily and basically the first time i really started doing nightmare dungeons when i leveled was at like tier 121 which is like the minimum 
in Assessor. Another thing to consider here is not just the glyph XP, but also, of course, your character's XP. Like when you defeat those monsters, you're going to get XP. And the optimal like difficulty to XP ratio is being behind the monsters by exactly three levels. This is exactly what you see here. I'm level 79. I'm running a tier 28 sigil and the monsters are level 82, exactly three levels above me. Because if you are three levels behind monsters, you get up to a 25% bonus xp which is the cap of bonus xp when you're under leveled so you cannot just like fight like you no know, level 100 monsters and suddenly get like you know five times the xp or something it's going to be a little bit more from that point so if you can still go higher tiers effortlessly then sure but generally you want to be exactly three behind so this is like the optimal ratio so like this you can kind of like choose those sniper dungeon sigils uh, according to your character's level so as a little rule of thumb, you want to run a Nightmare Dungeon Sigil that is around 50 to 53 levels below your character's level. So you see here, for example, with my character being level 79, if you deduct 50, that's 29, which yeah gives us exactly like the perfect tier to run here. So it's always your character level minus 50, roughly. Of course, there's nothing that forces you to do this difficulty, but in terms of like leveling up efficiently, this is definitely uh, the way to go so that you have like a fast clear speed while also getting optimal XP per hour. So this is kind of why. And this usually ensures that you can also kind of like level up your clothes faster and faster as you level up. What it also means is that when you are at level 100 or approach level 100, you actually want to run Nightmare Dungeons of roughly tier 50 or so, because 100 minus 50 is tier 50, or even higher. Like if you feel comfortable going higher tiers, again, you do get slightly more XP after that as well because the monsters kind of scale up in levels, but it's not really such a big bonus compared to the first three levels being on a level of the monsters. And this also means that, especially towards the end of the progression, you can really start boosting those glyphs that you use in your Paragon boards. So, for example, on a tier 50 dungeon, you're going to get, I believe, 102 glyph XP. So, if I recall correctly, you get 102 XP for your glyphs for a tier 50 dungeon, and leveling a glyph to level 21 requires almost exactly 3000 XP. So this means you have to do 30 runs on tier 50 to level a glyph. But for example, on tier 20, this would be um, something like 80 runs or something like that. So it's significantly more runs you have to do on the lower tiers, which is why I want to try to get everything out of the way first, like the Renown, like the Exploration, the Altar grind and all that. And then you just do like Nightmare Dungeons back to back to back if you want to stay efficient. And what you see here is the sigil crafting interface. So there's the occultist. You can actually just go there and craft any sigil you want. There's actually not like kind of like a you know roadblock or like some kind of progression you have to achieve to actually unlock this. You just have to do like one nightmare dungeon or something, and then this uh, crafting and salvaging of sigils unlocks. And you can use sigil powder that you get either just from the runs directly. So for example, you can do like side events in the dungeons. They can drop a bit of sigils uh, powder or just salvaging sigils. So when you have leftover sigils here, for example, you know, low tiers that you don't want to run anymore, then you just salvage them and get a bit of dust, and then you can use that to craft sigils again. When I played the game now, it was relatively easy to just have sigils all the time. So when you do a run, you usually find multiple sigils, and you only need one to open one. So there's always like a bit of a backup, so you may find sigils that have an affix that you really don't want to play against, you know, something like suppressor, bubbles on like a range build or there's also one that ranged enemies burn your primary resource which is very nasty on a lot of builds so there are these kind of effects that you just kind of want to skip or it's like it's just a dungeon that you don't want to run because it's very dangerous you know some dungeons are harder than others and also for example if you out level your sigils that you have you can just take that dust and then craft one new sigil or maybe two sigils or so of the tier that you want you see it has like a rather large range though so 51 to 60, you might not hit exactly what you want. So some runs might kind of like end up being a bit harder because you crafted a very high one. But in general, you can kind of decide on where to go, at least in difficulty. And when it comes to actually running those Nightmare Dungeons, you have to actually go there and use those sigils. And of course, you don't really want to waste your time traveling around. So at least later on, when you're kind of like, you know, just steamrolling through the dungeons, you probably want to try to stack up the same sigils like multiple times so they can chain them back to back. You know that there is this uh, dungeon reset timer now when 
you finish a dungeon, you have to wait a certain amount of time before it resets, but with sigils, that's actually not the case. You can always just activate a new sigil and go right into the next run. In fact, you can actually abuse this on hardcore as well to instantly teleport out of a dungeon, because when you activate a new sigil, it will deactivate your currently active nightmare dungeon and you just get kicked out. So another trick to keep in mind. One thing I can definitely tell you is when you run those dungeons, you definitely want to pay attention to especially those environmental effects. So you see here, there's like this floating little structure that follows me around. This is, uh, I think, called Lightning Pulse or something like that, Lightning Storm. And uh, here it spawns this bubble and then you have like this little timer above your head. And if you are not in a bubble when it runs out, then you get like zapped with some, you know, electrocute strike, basically like lightning strike. And as I mentioned, there's like this drifting shade. There are like these blood boils, they spawn and then they grow and explode. Generally, you want to pay attention to those because all these environmental effects, they can be outplayed and thus are very powerful. So you want to make sure that you avoid them. Of course, it doesn't matter too much on the lower tiers where stuff is still relatively easy, but you can definitely notice that the difficulty does scale up. So you see here, this is a tier 58 dungeon and I'm still only level 79. I just opened like a high tier now. And while I do have the damage to kind of make my way through, you can see that the incoming damage is noticeably higher. Like I'm getting wrecked in this and I actually was not able to even finish this dungeon when the monsters were like around 30, 40 levels above me. So uh, it does get pretty difficult, pretty fast. And reaching tier 100 is not something that anyone should expect really. At the very least, I believe that even fully decked out characters at level 100, like min maxed, will have a lot of trouble fighting level 154 monsters. You know, being underleveled by 50 levels is a lot. You take significantly more damage. You have like some penalty for being underleveled. You have, uh, you know, less damage that you deal to enemies. They deal more damage to you. And of course, they are scaled up to, I don't know what exactly. We don't know the percentage scaling per tier yet, but it's going to be pretty rough, that's for sure. Personally, I'm actually very much looking forward to the Nightmare Dungeon pushing. I mean, this is what I have been doing for like a decade in Diablo 3. Greater Rift pushing, and I definitely want to do that again here. I like this like slow, strategic you know, combat where you you know have to be very careful, dodge stuff, and actually fight enemies like for real, basically. So I'm quite looking forward to that, and I'm going to be doing a lot of that, uh, especially on Hardcore. I think that's going to be fun. But yeah, you can see that things that were previously quite insignificant actually can become a real problem when you're fighting higher tier monsters because suddenly the fights are longer. Suddenly stuff that you kind of ignored starts hurting you really hard. So it actually like changes the way you play in these type of dungeons depending on which tier you're running. If we just like speed through on like a fast farming build in like, you know, you kind of blitz through those dungeons in like two, three minutes or something on the right build, at least on something like a rogue depending on the dungeon. But of course, you know, like a real nightmare dungeon push where you have to play like very slowly, carefully. Uh, this can be, uh, you know, like 15 minutes plus or like it can be very slow and steady progression basically through a really difficult dungeon. And while it's not really something that is required to be done right now, so I think there's some achievement maybe for beating a tier 100, but outside of that, there's only bragging rights right now. It might be a really good idea to, you know, kind of get a hang of it when later what's actually come around, which likely will have something to do with the nightmare dungeons. One other tip I can give you is that at the end of the dungeon, you have your glyph like inventory where you can choose which one to level up. And you can see this here. So you can see like how much XP you have, how much do you gain, uh, what does the upgrade do exactly and all that. And you also have your gear entire inventory of glyphs that you can see there. And uh, I recommend you that you level up all of your glyphs to level two, at least those that you want to use, because they are actually listed here by the rank. So the higher level glyphs are always here on the top left. And then, you know, the next highest is here and the next highest is here. So instead of like trying to like click and search through those glyphs, because they all look kind of the same, uh, I would recommend you just when you start out with Nightmare Dungeons for the first time, you know, take your list of five, six, seven glyphs or whatever you're going to have in your build in the end game and just level them all up once and then just continue and like, rank them up in the order of priority from there. So they don't have to like search them in this inventory. That also pretty much sums up the basics and a few of the general tips that I have for Nightmare Dungeon running. Of course, there's going to be a lot more coming here. As I mentioned, I'm very much pumped to try out more of these high tier Nightmare Dungeons. So that's like the, the one thing I think I'll enjoy the most about this game. So stay tuned for a lot more 
updates and you know dungeon guides and pushing guides and all that stuff hope you liked this video here hope it helps you for the launch wish you good luck and see you guys next time